Good evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We are coming to you live here from our studio, doing our first impression session of our spotlight for the evening, where we talk about our favorite aspects of the game, any constructive criticisms we have, and if we would play it again. And tonight, we had the pleasure of showing off Deadpool vs. the World by USAopoly. And before we go, yeah, before we go any <laughs> further, geez, we would like to introduce ourselves. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Josh. I'm Aaron. And I'm Nicole. And ah, we are... And I'm hitting my microphone. There you go. And <laughs> we are Twist Gaming. And we would also like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are brought to you by Deadpool vs. the World by USAopoly. Uh, so we'd like to start out with our winner of the evening, talk about our their favorite aspects of the game. So Aaron, you are the most recent winner. So how about you oh, take us away So I here? get to go first. That's exciting. Yeah. Um... I love that the game is flexible because you can fill in the cards. Mm -hmm. So you can totally tailor the level of raunchiness, I guess we'll, we'll call it, to the audience. Absolutely. So one of the things in the uh, the early parts of the stream, uh, we were talking to Casey, who is the game designer, and we noted that the game says age is 17 plus on the box. And does that mean that there's just inherently graphic cards in the game, or is that just kind of a... Uh, fill in the blank your audience is what determines the age and playing through the game and he confirmed this as well it's the game has some mature aspects that could be seen but i wouldn't say that it's a 17 plus game in and of itself it's no, definitely the people that are adding to the experience there so you can kind of you can reduce the age level there yeah, I don't if know you if I'd, keep if it I'd tame play with like david but i think you could play with who's 8 i'd yeah. play with like michael who's 14 without going raunchy. I feel like that's... You could scale it back. I, I think either of them would be fine as long yeah. as you were able to adjust yourself. Yeah. Be because there's some inferences in the cards which might make it maybe PG-13. However, I don't know that they would get the inferences on the cards, so I don't know that it would matter. So okay. kind of like how there are always dirty jokes in Disney shows? <laughs> Disney shows or, or any cartoons. Like I can, I can remember watching <laughs> episodes of The Simpsons and things like that well, with, with like, oh, like with, with jokes from like Animal Farm that I didn't get until like 15 years later after I had read the book yeah. and realized that this was a, like a joke about that in <laughs> in the episode. So, uh, piggybacking off of that, I I really do enjoy the flexibility as well, but I like that the cards themselves kind of have dual meanings to them, the actual uh, WTF cards. So, I mean, this is, yes, this is Deadpool laying on a train track, but this is also just the take on the classic trope of the damsel in distress, or this one here. Yeah, it's it's Deadpool holding his head, but it's Deadpool reenacting uh, the scene from the Shakespeare play, you know, alas, poor... York, I knew him, Horatio, or Deadpool with the chestburster alien from the Aliens movie there, or this was a great one here, Deadpool knocked out in the corner, and I didn't even realize it uh, until Casey pointed it out, but he's got a bite taken out of the left side of his ear hole area, so that's a, a, you know, a riff on the Mike Tyson Evander Holyfield you know, drama from back in the day. So I, I really love that there's the subtle references there that kind of make you double take onto the cards themselves. And, uh, you know, I, I really do appreciate that. So now Casey had mentioned it. I think it turned into a fun little game within a game to see if people recognized the, the reference and whether they would get a joke make, you know, made based upon that reference or not. Absolutely. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's the copper tone. Is that a donkey? Yeah, uh, it's like a. I think it's like a dog with really big ears. Or is it a little ass? Could be a little ass. <laughs> a burrito? <laughs> a burrito! No, yeah, it's a dog with really long ears. Uh, so, Nicole, how about you? Uh, what I, I liked about it? Um, yeah, any, any of your favorite aspects of the game? No, I thought it was very. Um, because you're using car. Or, uh, and you're writing in your answers I think that this game would be very replayable mm -hmm. whereas like something similar like Cards Against Humanity which I I thought of initially I was worried it would be too similar it's definitely not um, I'm just, I'm tired of Cards Against Humanity because you're <laughs> playing the same cards over and over and this game I feel like there's a lot of replayability absolutely so one thing that I would like to note is that when we go into these games we play them blind for the most part so we haven't played them before so Josh read through the rules and that's kind of loftily putting it as Josh is joking around because this this here is the rules 
this this sheet of paper. This, <laughs> this four by one, two, six three, sheet of paper. four, five bullet points. Yeah. Each one's about a sentence long. I mean, maybe some of them are like two or three sentences, but uh, yeah, it's. So I walked in the room. I sat down. I knew how to play. So yeah, uh, Josh read through the rules. He explained it to me. I explained it by proxy to Aaron, and then Nicole, you heard it for the first time live, live uh, from Casey. So no questions. Did you have any difficulty picking up the game, or you just dove right into it? it? Just there's. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Uh, so Josh, how about you? Favorite aspects of the game? I just found out that the. The example in this has the word moist on it. It does. So that's the word they wrote in. It does. That, that, that just amused me. Um, real quick, we didn't talk about like what this game is. This is a... Oh, yeah. Sorry. A, this is a, just a party game, kind of in the same realm of Cards Against Humanity and things like that, but with a different take on it with the... You get to fill in your own captions of these cards. Right. So you have these cards here, and these are the caption cards, and this is, I'm not a fan of blank, but if you pay me enough, Sure. So you can write what you're writing in in this section here with the what erase marker is going to be whatever fills in this blank here. So I'm not a fan of T take that card there. This one here. Yeah. Okay. So this would be one of the uh, the WTF cards. This would be the scenario that you're trying to describe with that card yeah. in the most humorous way possible to have the editor, which would be the judge of the round pick. So I'm assuming you have an example teed up for us here, Aaron. Oh, I might write something like fortune cookies, Dr. Jones. I'm not a fan of fortune cookies, Dr. Jones. But if you pay me enough, sure. Okay, short round. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just a quick – so uh, as Nicole was saying, writing in the answers kind of makes it that you can kind of tailor the game to the group you're playing with. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gives you those – you can kind of do whatever you want and you're not restricted to, like, the cards in your you hand. You don't have the, the problem where if you've, if you've played it, three or four times you know every card that's going to yeah. come up and that kind of takes the fun out of it and there's also kind of a beefy amount of cards as well i there's believe that there's a hundred wtf cards and 300 caption cards yep. okay and the game comes with little wet eraser markers that you can just use and then you use a paper towel to clean them i believe i feel like in the rules they should have changed it to moist erase markers <laughs> just to <laughs> i mean to keep <laughs> in the vein here of deadpool <laughs> um but no I, I i enjoy i really i really enjoy the art on the WTF cards. Yeah. Like, I, they're I all really fun. And it's the, uh, kind of like the animated type of Deadpool here. And, you know, they're all super jokey, as Deadpool would be. So this is Deadpool with a magnifying glass and tweezers trying to take out his splinter. Or with the atomic wedgie. Or, oh, Deadpool uh, covering himself up with bandages. This is, This is the great one. Deadpool in the cone of shame. <laughs> I like it. All right, so folks, any other uh, aspects of the game that you really enjoyed that you want to talk about before we get into the constructive criticisms? Uh, no, I think they did a really great job with the uh, with the scenes that Deadpool's in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and they got they got that Deadpool humor throughout the game. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, so constructive criticism-wise, this is going to be where we talk about if we had the opportunity to change or tweak or alter some part of the game, uh, what we would do if given the opportunity. So, Josh, I'm going to toss this to you first. Me first. Um, I ran into an issue. And even though these have the right in the blanks, I just had a lot of issues correlating one of my cards to even come close. Yeah. Um, it, it maybe just up the hand limit from five to seven or something I might might have was going to say something similar i had um, some troubles with that um and that, that's a house rule kind of thing and and with these games you typically have like if you don't like your cards you can kind of toss your there's nothing official in the rules but that's typically what happens in these is yeah this is a uh, a fast and loose game if you will where no one's gonna care if you don't play 100 percent by the rules it's it's about the experience not about the yeah. result it's a framework to kind of play this game and you kind of do whatever you want with um I think you could do something along the lines of having the editor have to give their description of the situation. That may help in finding something to write about, also. Mm -hmm. So, so if you if you force the editor to paint a, to, to paint their own scene, yeah. you, you could kind of riff off that. I think a little bit too. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're getting at there. Let's use it for inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. But like that was my biggest. Like I just felt like I couldn't come up with something. 
Yeah. I, I, I felt like I was stuck in a few places as well because while the cards allow you to write in your own responses, they kind of force you into a hallway sometimes. It's not uh, an explore the world situation with your mm-hmm. write-in, which could be a good thing too because sometimes you're just dealing with people that are extremely more creative than everyone else and they're just going to run away yeah. with the game. So I kind of appreciate that the game kind of guides you towards a framework of a like decision. Like this card? Yeah. I had the hardest time trying to... Yeah, this was a tough one. That was a tough one. It was pretty tough. Yeah, it's like one of those situations where people don't get pop culture references. Yeah, the Obama one was probably my favorite one. I thought that was really funny. Um, But, like, that that card is... You can do a lot of different things with that. Like, could be volume. It could be farts. It could be, you know, uh, strapped to the granny, strapped to the top of the truck in the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, something to that effect. So, so, so like, it's just a few of the cards just was a little, a little weak. Yeah. But it's. Uh, How about you, Aaron? Is there anything that you would tweak given the opportunity there? I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing a timer or something like that. You know, like, you know, one of the little sand things. Because I, I know, and this is probably related to the last thing. Yeah. Where people maybe were having a tough time coming up with something. So if they were forced into action, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it, it, might, it might make it more your first reaction. So that ends up on the paper to kind of speed things along a little bit. I can definitely see the benefit of a timer. Yeah. And I definitely had analysis paralysis in more situations than one. Because I think when people are given too much time, it makes it more difficult versus, okay, you've got 15 seconds, write an answer now. Yeah, just go <laughs> on the first thing that pops into your head versus let me sit there and kind of tailor my message a little bit more. And then you wind up trying to sometimes to get enough too is cutesy. good enough. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I think, honestly, this is a like it's a very simple, straightforward game that I, I don't think is suffering too much in any department except for just a few minor criticisms that we pointed out in terms of sometimes it was hard to uh, to tailor an answer to the card. But I think that that's part of the game is trying to Uh-oh. work around that. Box. I think the game would have benefited from either upping the hand limit or uh, adding kind of a card swap or discard or card cycling mechanic mm-hmm. mechanism. But otherwise, I think it played very neat and tight. And, you know, it's a party game. So you could alter it as much as you want rules-wise. rules, r- rules wise. No one's going to care if you house rule it to high hell mm-hmm. uh, because it's what the game is set up for. It's it's mm-hmm. for, as I said before, it's not the destination. It's about the journey. Uh, why my minor nitpick? Yep. The box. This insert is horrible because <laughs> these cards don't fit in this box very well. Really? How this insert is. Um, why, why is that? Well, you think they go this way, but the the cards are too tall that way. So you have to kind of go like this. Are they too tall that way? They're they're too tall if you put the lid back on them. Yeah, is what he's going. So for. you put them in here, and I have a stack here and a stack here, or you can have them laying flat, flat down because they are widthwise. Show it off to the camera. Okay, show it in card cam. So you're saying that you need to lay them down widthwise like that. That, or you can have them stacked like across, like that. <laughs> Don't mind me. So, but they're they're too tall if you stand them up. So, but, but you stand them up that way. But then you have that big space to the side, which they just shift around, and they don't all fit. Really? Yeah. Because cards kind of decompress. They they were shrink wrap, so they fit okay. Yeah. The, once they decompress, they were just like no, they're not. Hmm. This is one of those things where uh, you're the only one in the group that would notice that because you're the one that's unpacking the games and setting them up and putting them away. Yeah. <laughs> um. Definitely wouldn't have noticed. All right. Uh, any other comments? Is questions, the comments, insert concerns? removable? Yeah, it's just a little cardboard insert. So, so that's, like, that's a problem. But, like, typically these games, they're the same with the card, so you kind of, like, long box kind of thing. Or, and If it was tall enough to do this, that would have been perfect. Awesome. Awesome because it was. Then the you can pull the cards out of there as you're yeah. going to kind of like Trivial Pursuit or something like that. But minor, minor details. All right, and I think we're going to get into the most important question of the Josh, evening you have today. To put the cards away right this second. I, I, and I that you. is, would you play this game again? Let me start on this end of the table and work my way down. Um, I would definitely play this game again. I think that this would um, this replaces Cards Against Humanity for me, um, and I know I keep kind of driving that. Well, it's the one that everyone knows, so it's, it's it's a baseline to judge this style of game against, for sure. This is perfect to, like, bring out with your friends who, like, only play Cards Against Humanity and they think it's so much fun and you're just tired of playing it and because you know that they already have the raunchy uh, 
sense of humor. Sense of humor, and everyone knows Deadpool, and it's basically the same level of party game. I I honestly don't see a reason to keep my copy of Cards Against Humanity at this point. <laughs> uh, so I'm super excited to play this game after having a few drinks, for sure, because I think that that would just get the ridiculousness flowing and the giggles going even more. And I saw someone in chat said that it uh, looks like, I think GameStop is going to be carrying a Not Safe for Work edition oh. of this. And I'm very, very curious to see what that's like. So yes, I would definitely play this game again. Let's, uh, let's get this a few drinks not, first. This is not the Not Safe for Work edition? No, no, it's huh. not. I I definitely want to see that. Josh? Yeah, I definitely play this game. I uh, definitely see this this goes up to it just says 3 plus yeah, players. Yeah, 3 plus. So it's it's as many as you could take. It's, it's got 100 limits. of the the yeah, one card, so. Like when it comes with like six marker. Yeah, six markers. Okay. So, just But I curious. mean, grab you a couple extra markers. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring or you can get more Or you can get multiple marks. copies. That's so, true so too. So out of the box it would play 7. Yeah, technically, because yes. you get one person. You, you would just have to rotate. You with yeah. the math, N yes. plus one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Aaron, how about you? Yeah, and I, I love your suggestion about the drinks, because I <laughs> think the condensation from the, the cold beers would help erase the markers. Oh! oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, so this game was meant for beers, obviously. Obviously. All right, so I think that that's thumbs up across the board from us here at Twist Gaming. And uh, we thank you all for joining us this evening. This is going to be Twist Gaming signing off for now. We hope to see you again for all of our upcoming streams. And once more, we would like to point out that this stream and all of this week's streams are sponsored by Deadpool vs. the World by USA Obli. Goodbye, everyone. Signing off, I'm Matt. I'm Josh. I'm Aaron. And I'm Nicole. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.